It's true. Now, early internet movie reviews, they're a staple of online culture. They've been happening for years, but who knew that hating Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer could probably get you fired? Late last week, a projectionist with the Memphis theater chain Malco posted an unauthorized early review of Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer to Ain't It Cool News, which provoked the full wrath of Hollywood. It's happening again, isn't it? Since the birth of the blog, filmmakers and Hollywood studios have always turned a blind eye to reviews on the web. But today, a negative early review can sink a movie before it even hits theaters. Oh my God! And this time, Fox did react. I have no choice. The projectionist was fired and the studio threatened to pull all of its scheduled press and trade screenings. This is serious. While the projectionist did not sign a non-disclosure agreement, some are saying he still abused his position by posting an early review. Is that bad? Should the projectionist have been fired or is this a new way of censoring reviews on the internet before they even get written? Please turn off all recording devices. It's the most romantic thing you've ever said to me. It's the loop. All right, let's do it. My guest tonight, film critic for MovieCityNews.com, David Poland is here, and film editor for USA Today, Scott Bowles, joins us. Welcome back to The Loop, everybody. Always good to be here. Appreciate you coming. Scott, let's start with you, because every week, dozens of, of reviews get posted to sites like Ain't It Cool News. It's nothing new. Some reviews are positive, others aren't. But up until now, it seems that, you know, the Hollywood studios have never really bothered to challenge where those reviews were coming from. Why do you think, like, Fox suddenly got so protective about, about their films? Well, this has been a franchise that they're very sensitive about because it's never gotten good, re good reviews from any corner. And in this case, I think that because it came from a movie house, because they were able to track it back, they were looking to make an example. But I think this could really backfire. I mean, there's nothing you can do about viral reviews except look like, uh, you know, Big Brother if you're trying to stomp these out. I think this is going to backfire on Fox's part. David, would you agree with Scott's assessment there? No. As much as I love Scott... Uh, it doesn't really matter, for one thing. Obviously, the review didn't change the box office in the movie. And the truth is, this guy, technically, was an employee of the company for that day. Employees don't write reviews of their movies. That's the standard. And the only thing that's different about this review than other things on any cool news, where the studios are paying a lot more attention than I think you realize, uh, is that this guy was basically employed to watch the movie and to project the movie, and his job is not to review it from the uh, projection booth. But nobody's job is to review it when it gets on the net. I mean, if he had signed a non-disclosure, if somebody works at Apple and they sign something that says, I cannot write anything about the iPhone, then you can't write anything well, about it. But if you don't sign anything... Yeah, the composer for the movie didn't sign a non-disclosure agreement saying but, he wouldn't review it on the new web, but if he reviewed it on the web, he'd never work again in Hollywood. Yeah, except I mean, journalism is, is based on that anonymity. I mean, from the Federalist Papers to to uh, Watergate. You, you can write what you want to write, and <laughs> Fox is only going to look bad because the You're review doesn't matter anyway. You're comparing the review anyway. of the Fantastic Four to the Federalist paper <laughs> Absolutely. Watergate. Freedom of the press. Hey, is, but he's not the press. Word. He's a kid. But now, David, yeah, you're right. He is a kid, and countless others have reviewed movies online without permission. So why start now with this particular because guy? Because if you employ somebody to do a thing, which is project the movie, that guy is got... There's a basis of confidentiality on the part of Fox. If the company he was working for did not say to him you can't do this, okay, then they screwed up. But from Fox's point of view, they basically paid for a private screening of a movie, and now the projectionist who is paid to show it is writing a review. I don't care if it's good, bad, or indifferent. It's not right. So it's he should be fired, period. Or it, it, if, the, if, the, if the exhibitor didn't do the right thing with him, then they should take responsibility for it. All right, now, because, David, and so, i got to bring this up, because, you know, just about two weeks ago on our show, someone was saying you should be fired for reviewing yeah. a pirated, unfinished copy of, uh, of Hostel 2. So, yeah, well, do you agree? Well, Baby Roth has his own issues. I mean, I worked this out with the studio the day I wrote the piece. The studio wanted me basically to have lunch with Eli, and I refused. So there's a little bit of BS on his part when he came on your show last Friday. Um, the reality is I'm a journalist. I'm not a kid in a booth. I am not a projectionist. And so it yes, makes it okay I, for you to review something early, well, even though it's unfinished, versus okay for, not okay for him to review it even though it was finished. Well, it's not about... It's, he's an employee of... In this case, he's an employee of the event. It has nothing to do with him personally. His personal choice to review a movie... Now, anybody who goes into a test screening has a thing where they sign that says, you won't review this movie online. And they all go against that anyway. So there's certain immorality to that, okay. too. Now, but Scott, in my case... Let's, let's, let's move on from, from that you know, case. Because, uh, if Scott, if the review was favorable, would Fox have even cared in the slightest? If this review were favorable, Fox would have quoted it in their ads. And what's, what's lost here is I don't think that's that true at all, Scott. Because, because these reviews don't mean anything, Fox looks foolish 
attacking a kid. It doesn't make any sense. It, he's an employee of the theater. The theater can take uh, measures if it wants, but to threaten to pull its ads, to take larger measures, doesn't do Fox any good. They spend money on legal fees that won't go anywhere. Scott, if you were working on a story and somebody in your office, and uh, somebody with a temp at your office, came and found the story in your desk and gave the story to somebody else before you published it, you don't think you'd be upset about that and think that temp should be fired? Yeah, but they're releasing the story. If they wrote a review about my story, they're absolutely free to do that. People can say what they want about it. But anything. they're not allowed to steal your work product, and a, and a test, screening re test screening is work product. It's no, not the No, leaking the film onto the net would be stealing it, not writing about it. Would there's you write about something that, you're not, that is a private event that you're supposed to see? It, you, there's an agreement going into that that nobody's going to write about it, much less the guy who's actually paying paid to project it. There was no agreement. That's the problem. There was no, but there's a tacit agreement. No, there is no tacit oh, agreement. I don't think there's any that okay well well I think us in the industry might understand there's a tacit agreement well, a guy running a projection reel may not understand the gravity of that situation but I we got to go on to the final word and I want to ask you both will we see movie studios adopting a similar stance against negative early reviews David let's start with you is is this going to set precedence no because their position has always been the same I mean it's basically they they don't like the early reviews they'd like to control it they have actually done less test screenings this is one of the things that damages that any cool news has done to this business however this is the very, very rare case in which somebody who's employed by one of the places showing the material has been caught doing something. The same thing is true as they leak the videotape of Hostel right. 2 or whatever else. If, that, if they go back and figure out where that came from, that person's going to get sued or fired or whatever. All right. uh, it's the same situation Scott, here. Scott, what do you think? Are, are other movie studios going to troll Ain't It Cool News looking for usernames? Well, they'll troll it, but they won't do anything. If anything, the theater chains may get their project projection to sign something. But the studios are not going to get involved in this fight because there's no upside to it. And the studios are trolling Ain't It Cool News now, every single day. Right. They know every single name that's on there. But they're not calling it. for the heads of every, uh, every projectionist at a regal cinema. But well, there are only one projectionist who actually made this mistake. Well, we'll see what happens in the near future. I have a feeling nobody else is going to be making that mistake, to say the least. I want to thank Scott and David for keeping us in the loop. Appreciate your time, gentlemen. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.